Now I want to turn it to what you as a patient should look for, okay? Because I myself, I mean, I haven't always been an echo sonographer. I have been for 18 to 20 years. But prior to that, I had a mother who had heart disease. And so I had so much wish I knew the stuff that I know now to tell you, being in the medical field, on what to look for. Because it's, it's real important, and it just helps you to decipher everything and to help you if you're the patient or to help you if you're supporting the patient. So what I came up with with this, and I think it's real important, and you can find these, a very most important thing to me is to have a compassionate staff. So from the second that you set up the appointment to right on down the line, Everybody should be compassionate to you. You're the patient, and you have every right to ask questions and to understand. And I myself, I like it when the patient asks me questions because I, they're just much calmer. They know what we're looking for and everything like that, and it just helps them so much more. Another important thing as far as us as echo sonographers is to be sure and get a registered sonographer. And there are two credentialing societies right now for us. It's the ARDMS, and that is in your handout, so you guys have all that. That's the American Registry of Diagnostic Sonographers. That's who I am um, in license under. Or CCI, which is Cardiac Credentialing International. And let me give you just a little uh, bit news on that. Echo sonographers are the, my understanding is we're the last ones that don't actually have to have a license but we have the registry, and that is all changing in a couple of years. At about, I think it's 2012, we will need to be licensed because all the other modalities are, and so it's come our time, and we welcome it because we want everyone who's in there to be licensed just as we are because then we're all held to the same standards, and, and it looks good with our profession. Another thing you should look for is a thorough examination. How would you know it's a thorough examination? You won't really, except you will for little tips that I tell you. It shouldn't be something that's done in 10 minutes. I can tell you that. They're going to be looking at your heart here, so they've got all the valves to look at, all the chambers to look at. I would say roughly it should be 20 to 30 minutes. Now, if I have people that come back into me, and it's funny, I can do someone's heart, and then they come back five years later, and it's I remember the heart. And once I start, I'm like, oh, okay, and I'm comfortable with that. But when they're first investigating, they really need to do a thorough examination. And the other thing is you really want to have a staff that's open to questions and communication from every like I said, every step of the way. That just makes it easier for you. And, and you have that right to ask and to know because we're servicing you and you're helping us by knowing what you want and then we can better serve you. Now, at the end of your echocardiogram, and this is what I tell every one of my patients, always be sure to ask for a copy of your CD and a copy of the dictated report to keep for your own medical records. It's good for any test that you have because if you come now to um, a new doctor, you've got everything right there. It's going to save you headaches because you don't have to, two or three years from now, look for that study. You've got it right with you. And, it, and you can get that. You can get all, all those copies. So have them either, if they can't make it right there, which could be understandable, you could have them mail it to you, or these days of HIPAA, you will probably have to go through the medical records department, but that's okay. Have your own copy. Ev everything that you get done, just have a, every copy of it. Thank you. I wanted to join um, Deanne at the podium and comment on a couple of things. I told you earlier today that my husband's aneurysm was found with that echocardiogram that was performed in early January 2001. And that, um, it, it happened to be, this is a hospital very close to us, it happened to be done at that facility. We have, since we met Deanne, always requested her, if you at all possible, uh, use the tips she gave you and 
try to have it done by the same technician every time because it is very dependent on how they perform the test and you will get consistency. So getting the very best study mm -hmm. and by the same person. The other thing is my husband's echoes from the very beginning in 1990 were read by the same mm -hmm. cardiologist because when he got very sick and had pneumonia and all of that in 1990, it happened to be the same hospital, which is near our home. And so the same cardiologist, until about a year ago, mm -hmm. he had to retire. But what a great thing that was for us that all these years we had the same cardiologist read the echo. I never have met him, but I have every report that he signed. And to that man, we owe a great debt because he identified what he saw through what the echo sonographer had discovered and he looked carefully and identified the aneurysm. So an echo is a good first test. It may not find the aneurysm, but in my husband's case, it did. So tr looking for consistency, and I talked about Bobby earlier. He had an echo in his local community, and it was one of those 10 to 15 minute quickies. And then when he came here and um, was being evaluated, he had an echo done here at this facility, and he told me, Arliss, I realize that's the first real echocardiogram that I ever had, and it took about an hour. Just a couple of important tips. Um, this is a common test, and, it, and we just want to understand what its usefulness is and what its limitations are, and Deanne has told us that very clearly today. And Personally, uh, my family is deeply indebted to Deanne and others like her who do such wonderful work and take care of us like we are their own family members. Thank you.